All right, guys, we're here. Paracleptic Podcast number 14. Let me make sure I can hear you guys. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I can Hello. Yeah. We're What's good. up? Yep. All right. Welcome. I got a little bit of, uh, we got special get. We got some new guys this time. Um, you may have seen them from one of our previous podcasts. Uh, we have uh, Bort Hammer. Hello. And Escard. Hello. Both here with us tonight, and then we have our special spooky guest, Raul. <laughs> Raul the Skeleton. Uh, he's here as well. He's got some special picks for us tonight, so uh, awesome. st- stay tuned for those. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, our, our fourth had to uh, cancel kind of last minute. Couldn't find a, a replacement, uh, but Raul was here. He was happy to oblige, so we got him as well. <laughs> Bor my, and my, Raul, that's right. <laughs> my boy Box. Yeah. What so, up, homie? Uh, oh, thanks for the follow, Box. And thanks for the host, Kovic. Um, all right, so uh, this week, uh, let's start off with what we always do, currently playing uh, stuff. I actually played quite a bit uh, new stuff for me this week. Uh, first one being uh, Layers of Fear recently. I uh, just started Ooh. playing it. Um, because it's October, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, spooky games, right? For the month of October. So, uh, mm-hmm. this is my first one that I'm doing for this week. Sexy Raul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's the highlight of the podcast, Raul. Uh, anyways, uh, it's pretty fun. I like it. I mean, it's scary as hell. Like, so what I've been telling everybody, especially while I've been streaming is like, I love scary movies. I can handle scary movies. I can watch any scary movie you throw at me. But scary games, I can't do anything. Like, (laughs) it's just like the whole time I have to be talking. So I'm like, I'm talking a lot whenever I'm playing that game, just like to myself and stuff. And like anything pops out, like jump scares, I'm just like dying on the floor. So (laughs) it's rough. I don't know why, what the difference is, I guess, because you're actually controlling the character or something and it it just makes it different from, you know, to me, Yeah. but, uh, it's good so far. Like I, I enjoy it. I like it, but like, I can only do like a two hour session. Then I got to make sure I play something else afterward because I need to like, you know, calm down and, and, and not be so tense, you know? So So you, 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 you get that tension with layers of fear. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's pretty good. It's very suspenseful, um, and I still can't tell you this because I don't know. There's no there's no like antagonist, like no monster, at least that I've found yet. So it scares the shit out of me, and there's no like no monster. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. like a good game to me. Like it's really good. So yeah, I so I've actually beaten that game, um, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but sure that kind of the i think the main point of the game is the mystery of it like yeah it, it's got this pretty interesting story so as you're going through that's really what you're doing is just uncovering the mystery of the story when i have some like theories as well like of of what is actually happening mm-hmm. and so like it's i'm excited to finish it because i want to know if like i'm right or if I'm not, you may never know. Like it may be how you interpret it, right? Because a lot of games are like that as well. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. You know, it's just I. It's a really good game. I recommend it already, and I haven't finished it. I'm only. I'm in. I started chapter three, so I, I've done the first two chapters out of six. So okay, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, there was there's actually some extra content for that. I haven't played it, but uh, it takes yeah, there's place after the game. there's definitely a DLC, um, which I have, but. I haven't gotten that far yet, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. And that, that game's like fifteen bucks, right? It's pretty cheap. It's pretty affordable. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, I picked it up because James recommended it to me, of course. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. And so I blame James, but yeah, he <laughs> he def it's definitely uh, not a bad game for the especially for the price too. So yeah. Uh, anyway, so I played that. That's really good. 
Um, I played a game that just came out last week, Pathfinder Kingmaker, which is a CRPG. So you have like a whole party. You know, it's 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 like reminiscent of Baldur's Gate or like newer games, uh, Tyranny, um, or what's the other one? Pillars of Eternity. Those are the newer ones that have come out. Um, and Pathfinder is an old. That's an old tabletop RPG, Path, right? Pathfinder is an older tabletop. It's actually probably. So it's Pathfinder, then like fourth edition, fifth edition. So it's okay. kind of right in there. It's still kind of newer. Like that version is still being played right now. So the yeah. current version. But it does use that rule set. Um, what I like about it is it uses that rule set. So it's cool. You kind of have a, like if you play the tabletop, you kind of have, you're familiar with how the classes work and how the abilities work. But what's nice is there's not a lot of upkeep. Like you, it's not, you, you don't have to manage that character like you do at a tabletop because the, games doing it for you you know right but it's really cool it has it has some really cool systems um the party system and like the camping system like there's a there's a system just for camping where you have to assign people tasks so that that lets you like get your food better like if you have a certain person in there hunting you get more food or whatever you know disguising your camp so you get attack less stuff like that so that's it's really cool um, and then it has like a real, really, really in-depth kingdom system. So it's not just like a dungeon crawler. You also are managing a kingdom. So it's pretty neat. Like mm-hmm. you have more than one aspect of the game going at once. It's really, it's really cool. So okay, that's a cool, cool. That's a good one. I got a decent amount of hours in it, but I don't even think I'm halfway done. I think I got like ten hours in there right now. So I don't know how many hours the f- the full game is, but it's it's pretty fun. Uh, that recently came out, so that's not. That is actually a new game that I played. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most of the uh, most of the games on my list are always like old, like from a couple of years ago. And that brings <laughs> it's not all that. That brings me to my last game, uh, which is Wolfenstein. And uh, I'm playing a New Order right now because I know there's been quite a few of the last few years that have come out. Dude, I don't know. Like I am enjoying the hell out of that game. Uh, it's just a really fast paced shooter. There's not like anything crazy about it, you know. Uh, the story is kind of neat. I mean, it's out there because it's, you know, alternate universe where the Nazis take over, you know, the Wolfenstein style. But, like, the crazy gadgets you find and stuff because, you know, technology is so advanced in that world. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's that's the first one of the series re- reboot, the right? reboot, yeah. 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 Okay. I'm, I'm okay. playing that one first. Um the fact that you can basically dual wield everything is ridiculous, but also really fun, actually. You know, it's like just awesome to wield like two machine guns and just go at it, you know? So, yeah. Uh, yeah I, go ahead. I actually, I just finished that game like December of last year. I'd never played it either. And um, I agree with everything you're saying. I think it's really fast paced, really fun. And I was very, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised. So about- was I, yeah. Yeah, like I'd heard it was good. You know, I get a lot of people coming into my store tell me it's a good game, but I, I just, you know, I was like, it's a shooter. You know, kind of like Doom. You know, when I thought of, when I saw Doom, I was like, is that really that good? But because it just seems so generic to me. But really, Bethesda has done great with both those games, with the Wolfenstein series and the Doom series. I think they've done a really good job with those two series as far as making them very, um, I guess, just really upgrading them to making them, I think, more modern, but with feels kind of old, kind of but with, I guess, newer mechanics, but. That game's got some crazy, ridiculous boss fights and some crazy, ridiculous weapons, and uh, there's a few, there's a few pretty intense moments in both the first and the second one. So I really, I like that game a lot too. Yeah, I think I'm almost done with the first one. I and I have the second one. I'm gonna play it, and I'll probably end up buying the the newest one as well because I just yeah. I'm enjoying it. I also like the fact that, like it's balls to the wall, or you can do balls to the wall. But there has been many missions where I'm just like sneaking around stabbing the dudes you know like <laughs> nobody knows i was ever there like it's awesome you know so yeah. you can also be very sneaky in that game too so it's really cool so uh those are the games i've been playing uh what about what about you s card what do you got okay i've been playing three and i know three of them that all matt can really relate to because i think he's playing two of them at the same time i am but yeah um, the first one is dragon quest 11 it came out september 4th i believe but it came out early last month and uh I mean, it's, you know, really standard JRPG. I think Dragon Quest is pretty well known at this point for being the typical, I guess, really basic JRPG. But, you know, they try to add some more stuff in this one as far as, um, 
some of the combat or the the combat's a little bit different because you can switch your party in and out like whenever you're in combat, which is pretty important for some boss fights. Um, the story is really great because there's some really good twists in that. Um, I know Matt hasn't gotten too far, so I don't want to say too much, but mm-hmm. there are some really good story twists in that game that I was not expecting, which I like, you know, because it's hard to really get through the RPG tropes these days and make it something different. And I feel like they tried a lot of, you know, kind of curveballs to get through that, which I thought was cool. Um, the character builds are really neat. You can build your characters in a lot of unique ways, which, you know, completely different. I'm sure the way I play is different than the way Fort will play, you know, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, post game content is like you know it's like 60 70 hour game probably but the post game is another 30 40 hours of just more of it which is you know it becomes a really good purchase at that point and then you know it's a beefy game it's a very beefy game yeah soundtrack's <laughs> great um you know it's all pretty they use a lot of tones from the old games but really it's just overall really well done soundtrack and you know toriyama the guy that does dragon ball z and um you know he does this game as well you can tell the art's very similar but he's always had a knack for making really cool monsters so you know, it's pretty cool to see, you know, like the different enemies you fight on in the screen. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, kind of like you said, it's sort of your typical JRPG. Like, it doesn't do a lot of surprising stuff. But the thing about Dragon Quest is it does it really, really, really well. Like, it's so polished. It's like, you're going to have a good time if you like RPGs. It's, I don't know. Like, to me, Dragon Quest can just do no wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was up. A- I was just going to say, I so the last Dragon Quest I played is the one we played on the DS, okay? Nine. I think yeah. it was nine. Okay, but I've been, like, eyeballing this version because I just really like the aesthetics of it. Mm-hmm. And so I've been really thinking about diving into another edition and trying it, but... I just I don't have the time right now, so I just have it. I'm I'm kind of waiting. I'm I'll probably buy it when it's on sale, but I I I am kind of interested in this one because it looks I really like the look and it's just jumping into another Dragon Quest and like you said, putting in seventy hours is not happening for me. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so. I can safely say this is probably the best one to play if you've not really been familiar with the series. I think it's probably the best one as far as I mean, it might not be my favorite per se, but you know, I played them when I was younger, so I've got more attachment to some of the older ones but as far as um like just overall well-made game i think that's probably it's probably the best choice for someone getting into the series it's it's a really good game so yeah and it's it's not quite as deep as like dragon quest 7 like that that game's job system it's I, well i don't know if i call it deep but it's um grindy yeah, that's good. yeah. <laughs> this one's way more accessible as far as that stuff goes like the mechanics are easy to get into and figure out cool. and they've always had a pretty good knack for having like really good just the, the voice acting just kind of goofy but it's it's pretty good like i feel like they all all, as, all aspects of that game are pretty high quality overall as far as like the voice acting or the music quality or the sound quality the way it looks so aesthetics so cool. yeah well, all right what else have you been playing uh Mega Man 11 again Matt I know Bort has been playing that too but yep. it's classic Mega Man it has a new you know, kind of a facelift overall but to be honest it it's Mega Man you know eight bosses Dr. Wily's up to no good like usual <laughs> you, know, you have your boy still. Rush with you yeah still you have your boy Rush you get a little backstory actually from the Dr. Light and Dr. Wily which is pretty cool yeah um, but yeah I mean you know it's typical I mean it's cool they made a casual mode which is great for people that want to play it but just can't you know mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing to have these days because, you know, I, I know everyone likes to think that they're great at games that they play the hard mode, which is awesome, you know, good for you. And But there's a lot of people that want to play these games, especially younger people that just, you know, they didn't grow up playing hard games. And so it's hard for them to get into it and they want to because, you know, it's, it, you know, they have Saturday morning cartoon for Mega Man. So a lot of kids want to try it. But this game is brutal. But luckily they have a casual mode that makes it much more accessible, which I think is a really good addition to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, I, I mean, it's Mega Man. I, you know, if you played one, you played them all, but. This is just more of the same. It's just I think it's got a cool facelift, and you know, so far they added a few mechanics, but it's really fun. It looks really good. Like I've yeah. uh, been watching, just graphics wise, it looks real nice and crisp. So that's good. Yeah. Oh yeah, and like just the way like the screen pans, it you could tell they really paid attention to what the old games did, so that it really feels like you know a classic Mega Man game, just like Nakona said with or with like Escard said with a facelift and looks and sounds real nice and um yeah yeah i mean you've got your slide you've got your charge shot so all the classic mechanics are there and then it adds in this uh you your trigger buttons do um there's like you can do a speed up or a power up and you have a little meter that pops up so 
you know, if you use it all, it'll go on cooldown. But it's the sort of thing like it's a new mechanic for people new to the series that can make things a little easier on you. Um, but you absolutely do not have to use them. Like I, I think Esgard said, you didn't use them at all your first yeah. game through, right? Barely. I mean, I accidentally pressed the button a few times to try to switch weapons. So like I accidentally activated them, but yeah, it's it's not necessary. But again, it just makes it easier, which is cool, which is always a good addition. Yeah. Cool. And then you said you had a third game that you played, Nakata? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, my video. Uh, yeah, the last thing I played, I'll just go over it real quick because, I mean, it's been out for 20 years, but uh, <laughs> I played through Majora's Mask on 3DS recently. Wow. Yeah, I'd never really, I mean, I played it when I was young, but I mean, I think I beat that in like two sittings on a rental, so I don't really remember much about it. But um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. I think it's the one of the most overrated ones in the series. I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but I was, <laughs> I was glad to have played it and get a really good opinion on it now. And uh, it's really it's pretty good. It just sucks that it came out after Ocarina and before Wind Waker. It's just sandwiched between really two great Zeldas. So, you know, I mean, to just playing it, it's still a pretty high quality game. But you know, overall, it's just kind of just weird. And I don't know. It was it was okay. Yeah, I Majora's is the one that I've never played all the way through like i've sat down and tried to play it a couple times and i i do like it, it it's cool i think the the premise of it's really interesting but uh i think what always gets me is the pacing yes, like something it just feels off and it, it's really hard for me to stay into it once i start it um because i'm the kind of person like i like to really fully explore the world and see what it has to offer and that game does have a lot to offer but Absolutely. It, between like your your main quest stuff it can really plot on and it it just drags a little bit yeah, yeah I, and i think the main thing about that game that i didn't like is the pacing like you said it's a is pretty bad overall but not only the pacing but just the i mean the game really starts dropping off because it becomes so tedious to do even small stuff as you get further in yeah game, which to sure. me you know the beginning starts a little tedious but you know it, it's not that bad but you know it gets more and more tedious which to me is just not what you want but like you said, there's a lot to do. There's 52 heart pieces. There's tons of content. Like, it's a it's a great game. I think it's just to me overall, it's just a little. It just sucks. It came out after like probably the best Zelda or one of the best Zeldas, and then before one of the other best Zeldas, in my opinion. So yeah, you know. yeah, that's pretty much it though for me. Cool. Did you? And play I ain't it? got any. Right. I don't have anything else to add because. But you commented, right? Game. You did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You played, this played is similar more of a games. And S card. What have yeah. you been playing? Together, together. <laughs> well, what also I like uh, about having you guys on is you're basically my console guys, so I yeah. get some different views. You know, <laughs> it's not True. always about PC. All right. Cool. <laughs> well, hey, let's get into the actual content of this podcast uh, for this this uh, edition. Uh, we decided that it'd be a good idea to do some like horror theme stuff uh, since it's October. So uh, we have a few categories that we went over. Uh, let me see if I can show you my categories. Let's spoop it up. <laughs> so we got four different categories. We got scariest game, bloodiest game. Okay, and these are kind of for the most part in the horror genre. Uh, and then we have our horror dud and all-time favorite so uh oh wow Whoa. There's, there's james Jimbo james Ray. is here boys Whoa, what up? hey everybody hey thanks a lot james it's good to see you buddy hopefully you had a good stream uh so those are our four categories as i was explaining so now that everybody's here we mm -hmm. have the scariest the bloodiest and then the horror dud and the all time favorite. So, so those are our basically going to be our picks that we're talking about uh, tonight. So let's go ahead and oh, and by the way, like I said, Raul does have some special picks for us. <laughs> so you guys nice. get ready for those special picks. They're great. I, I can't wait. I can't I'm wait. Very excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> so what I like to do usually, so that we don't just have one person talking for the entire time, is we're going to start off with scariest. Uh, and I'll do mine, then we'll go down the list, basically. So it makes sense. Okay. That way okay. that way everybody hears from us and you know we can we can uh kind of split up the, the discussion. So um I'll start with my my first pick. Which for me my scariest game is Amnesia Dark Descent, at least for me. Ooh, um yeah. so uh one. yeah, so most people have probably played this game. I'm going to guess. And, uh, 
you know, it's one of those games that uh, I was told to play. Like, uh, I, again, we discussed this earlier. I love horror movies, but I cannot play horror games. <laughs> and this thing, just, just, you know, how the game is like, you have to choose. Like, there's no choice, really. Like, you gotta hide from the monster, but you can't stay in the dark for too long because, like, you start losing sanity. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just, like, nowhere to turn already. Just thinking about the game and playing the game, there's just nowhere to turn. Um, you can't fight back. You know, there's no... You don't have, like, any weapons or anything. Yeah. Um, so it's like... I don't know. It's a, a, this is one of my bigger fears in the first place is not being able to fight back. So any horror game where you don't have a weapon is already a, a up in in scariness for me. So it's just one of those things that, like, I don't know. It just hits me on, on a lot of levels, you know? So Yeah, the, the tension level in that game is insane. Yeah, like, it's yeah. ridiculous. And, it, and, and it's just... It also does a lot of things well, I think. You know, which is... I'm oh, sorry about that. Uh, which, you know, when it does a lot of th when some of the things it does well is like uh, I like that there's a variety of monsters and they all have like different things you need to do to like get around them or past them. So I like that. It kind of keeps the game, um, fresh. you know, fresh and new and like you know you you uh, you obviously. I was trying to get this to work, but I can't get my <laughs> my video's not working. So oh dang, you're so scared talking about it, David. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let me uh, give me one sec, boys. Let me see. There well, we go. All right. Anyway, so you know, uh, and I like that as you know, like a psychological horror as well because of the sanity and stuff like that. So it's just it it hits on a lot of points and it's pretty scary. You know, it's just very dark and everything else you know so uh i don't know if you guys you said you've played it too i don't know what oh, you yeah. like about it but uh i mean pretty much what you said like it just it's really scary <laughs> um that that to me was the the most fun part like you're gonna i don't know the fact you can't fight back it, it just it was a new kind of uh horror game to me and going through the house and uh I, of course I'm, I'm a big story guy so i liked uncovering you know what the heck was actually going on the whole time thought it was pretty interesting and I, I will say that one thing this game does that i thought was better than a lot of the games that are similar as far as the not fighting back is it keeps it pretty fresh throughout the game i think atlas kind of suffers from being pretty repetitive in a sense as you get mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. game it doesn't really change much like it, this this the horror part of that game is really intense but as you've done it for like two or three hours, you're like, well, at this point, I'm just going like, to get it. I think uh, the, little, the little I played in Amnesia doesn't really have that problem, which is pretty impressive. I think that's hard to do. It's a hard mechanic to really master to keep it fresh in a game where you're doing similar, like the, the gameplay mechanics don't really get different um, throughout the game. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, it's it's just, overall, I just it's scary to me just, just for the aspects of uh, not being able to do anything. So like for me, it's just like if I if I play a horror game and there's a gun or something, it's I was almost like just not even a horror game at that point for me. I mean, sometimes you know they have like jump scares and stuff like that, so it's still scary. But it's like just when you can't fight back, it's just ten times worse for me. Like it's just I don't know, just like oh, yeah. layers layers of fear like I'm playing right now. Even though so far, as far as I know, there's no like monster quote unquote <laughs> i'm scared as hell yeah that's well you know like no, not any spoilers per se but like there's a part in the in the game where you see something like uh walking around and i'm just like is that is that real or is that my mind like i don't like it it's it's very it's very bad so <laughs> yeah anyways. your your own imagination's the enemy yeah so anyways so <laughs> that's my scariest you know so uh we will move on to Bort's scariest, I believe. Yes. So my pick that most of you have probably heard of and uh, played is Fatal Frame. And uh, it's a series, of course, but I went ahead and went with the first one because 
nothing to me like lived up to those first times I experienced what this series had to offer. Um, now, if if you're not familiar with the uh, Fatal Frame, it's a Japanese horror game where you use a camera basically to defeat ghosts. And that sounds really silly, but <laughs> it's actually really fun to play. And um, the the atmosphere in that game is insane. Like to me, it's just so spooky. Um, so like the footage I, I recorded, it, like the first intro area and the sound design is insane. Like you get, you, there's one point where you approach a door and you just hear this really like deep guttural prayer being recited. And it's yeah. just, it's nope. the creepiest thing ever. Nope. Nope. Sounds yeah, amazing. exactly. L- lots of nope in this game. <laughs> uh, um, so just as an example, I was recording this footage on uh, last weekend, actually, Saturday night around 7 p.m. So it wasn't quite dark out yet. I had headphones on and like I was still getting goosebumps. The, this is a game I played years ago when it came out. I, I can't remember what year it was. Uh, do you remember Esgard? Like mm, 2000, 2000, 2001, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that that old of a game, you know, the graphics they don't hold up terribly well, but to me, it just, it still creeped the crap out of me. Um, and I thought the setting was actually really unique at the time. You know, it's this old abandoned Japanese mansion, um, you know, where you, you figure out what's going on. You At the beginning, you find out it was a place where a lot of people disappeared and uh, murders happened and stuff like that. So um, th- the story is pretty interesting as you go through. And they they reused the story uh, the character right from the the third game. She's the same one, if I remember correctly, or one of the characters. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, it, it's been so long since I played this series. I can't remember exactly where the characters show up. So yeah, like I, this, this intro, you actually play as the main character's brother. Brother, yeah, um, that's the main part. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's probably the first fifteen minutes or so, and then you go into playing as her. Yeah, really, but, that game, that series is like, I, I think it did a really good job of being consistent. All three of the main ones in the PS2 era were all really, I think, were scary. That great atmospheres. Um, I thought the second one, for me, was the scariest overall, probably because I beat that one before I beat the first game. Um, mm. Yeah, they uh, they did a really good job because, like you said, it's kind of a silly silly on paper gimmick, yeah. but the uh, it works pretty well. Like, it, it's like it's kind of RPG in, in a sense because you have to, like, damage the, the ghosts and stuff, but it's got survival horror in the sense that you don't have a lot of camera film to use throughout the game, which I thought was kind of interesting. So it was the survival horror in that sense. Yeah, and what makes the the combat tense is you know yeah you you take a picture of the ghost to kill it but it doesn't like die instantly and you go into a first person view so that's what really makes it creepy is you're pulling up the camera and you switch that first person view so you have ghosts literally flying at your face (laughs) as you're trying to wait for your meter to build up build up so you can do more damage to it and it it's just so tense and so creepy did you watch uh, is this something that reminds me of this? Did you watch James playing Visage at all, Bort? No, I didn't. I missed that. Uh, it has a, a mechanic that reminds me of this slightly. Like, uh, you have a camera. You have to, uh, like, take flash. Like, the flash shows the ghosts or whatever. Oh, okay. So, like, you have to flash the camera a lot. So, it's it's kind of crazy. You can, you can hear the ghosts, and then you just got to frantically flash the camera everywhere to find out where it's at. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty intense when he was playing it. But anyways, so one thing I'll say for it is, uh, you probably saw I had the the control scheme screen up for a few seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, the controls don't hold up terribly well, and it's mostly because of what people have gotten used to with first person shooters, where you move with your left stick and you look with the right stick. Well, when you're in the camera mode, it's the opposite. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you're moving terrible. with the right stick and you change your view you look with the left stick and there was not an option to change it that's why i was looking on the menu Mm -hmm. um so if you do go back and try to play this game it's uh it's gonna take some getting used to but definitely worth it yeah that's one of those series that i feel like probably should be a trilogy remade absolutely well i mean they're doing it with everything else so you know know. yeah techmo hasn't been very on top of that stuff so that's i think a a kind of a series they let die and i feel like 
Uh, I just feel like those games were always underappreciated because they were always behind the big the, the juggernauts, the Silent Hills, and the Resident Evil. So, yeah, and sure, then the sure. the most recent entry they decided to release on the Wii U. So uh, obviously, episodes, flop. Right? It was quality, <laughs> quality gaming. Well, well, don't forget their spinoff on 3DS that you had to have a weird book for or something that was just yeah. It's it's called Spirit Camera. I I still haven't actually played that thing, but uh. Yeah, it was essentially a spiritual successor to it, but I would much rather just like you said have a HD re-release of the original trilogy. Yeah, the, those are the best. I had to fix y'all's cameras. I didn't realize it wasn't on the video one, so we're good now. Yeah, sorry guys. Dang. No, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Sorry, I can see us now. Yeah, but yeah, so yeah. Fatal Frame definitely my my scariest pick. Good choice. Cool. All right. So uh, that's good. Let's uh, move on to Escard's pick. Okay. Now, let me just say there's probably like four other games I could have mentioned for scariest, but I didn't want to take anyone's thunder away, and I didn't want to take my own thunder away for a pick I have later in this list here. So I chose <laughs> the most insane game I could think of that was pretty scary overall. <laughs> but I, I appreciate this game for a couple things. It was called Haunting Ground. It was a Capcom release that came out, I think, 05, maybe, or 06. Um, Nobody here's played it. No one's played it. Even Everybody's Ford like, "What the played... hell is this?" Yeah. Okay, so let me let me go over it. Okay, so overall, the the concept's pretty cool. It's uh, you're at the beginning, you're just in some weird cage. It's like, okay, it's already starting off a little weird. But I guess you'd gotten kidnapped at some point, and you're just basically trying to get out because you're, you're like a weird. teenage girl, right? Let yeah, me... I think she's like eighteen or nineteen. Okay. Okay. I was gonna ask because I found a PS2 trailer. Is that right? Yeah, it's PS2. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> so anyway, the environment's pretty creepy. You're in the house, and like I said, it, it's to me, it, it's it's a spiritual succession of the Clock Tower series, which was a series that came out sorry on the S, the Super Famicom, and we had some on PlayStation One come out. Um, but the biggest thing about this game that I feel like this series kind of started the whole running but not fighting mechanic. Would you agree with that, Fort? As far as like, I mean, Clock Tower kind of kind of spearheaded that, but well, not, yeah, but I I consider this part of that series. Yeah, yeah, for so. sure. Okay, so yeah, so and that's because this game, you know, Clock Tower came out in like the, the 90s, and this is kind of one of the those same games. It's a spiritual successor, but it's Clock Tower in every sense of the word. Oh, but yeah. But anyway, um, so you don't have any defense, you're running, and this game has a big mechanic of hiding, you know, in spots. Like there's preset spots you hide as you're running from these, you know, in every chapter, there's a different, it's a different person or a different weird creature that's chasing you. Um, you know, your character, the, the way it works is if, you know, you, the, the person or the, thing chasing is getting closer you start stressing out and the screen gets darker but she loses her balance as she runs and uh she has you know it's harder for her to kind of stay you know i guess focused on getting out of there and find a, a spot to hide in and she'll start like panting heavily if she's in a spot uh so it's be easier to catch her if you know if she's stressed out pretty highly and then you know you die essentially by just you know having a total up, uh, essentially but um it's pretty cool so there's not like a damage bar per se you don't get take damage you just kind of get stressed i guess is the best way of putting it and the screen gets darker and darker until you just, you know, just, you know, go out basically. Nice. Um, what about the cool. dog? Yeah. Okay. So that's the next mechanic. But this game has <laughs> early on, they they kind of <laughs> they have a mechanic that you get a, a, a like a, I guess like a husky. I don't know. He, he looks like a I don't know what kind of dog, but yeah, he's you know it's pretty cool because like you basically can set him to do stuff like you know chase the the guy and like attack him while you get in the spot and hide. The dog is smart enough to realize that, you know, hide somewhere else that's not in the same, like, oh, let me go find my owner right here in the same wardrobe. And it's like, oh, crap, I know where she's at. So, but it's cool because a lot of the puzzles require him to, like, you know, get something's attention or to, uh, you know, hit a switch while you're doing something else. And uh, I, I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. It's a good change of pace as far as, like, those type of games go. Yeah, and definitely probably one of the earliest examples of an AI partner that you can, yeah. you know, only slightly control. Yeah, and it, it worked pretty well, honestly, because, you know, I, I feel like, you know, just playing Resident Evil 4, which came out around the same time, it's not quite, you know, same AI level. I don't know if you agree with that, but, um, yeah, anyway, uh, the biggest thing, also thing is, um, I like the, uh, just the story was pretty cool. The plot twists are interesting. Um, the stories, you get very little as you go on, but it's kind of like an old Resident Evil game where you get a lot of it through the, the notes that you find in the areas, and you get a lot of, uh, kind of like the, the, the lore by just, you know, reading stuff that you see about where you're at and who you are and things like that. Yeah, I don't know. Overall, it's pretty cool. Um, it's very expensive, so you can't really just buy it in your local store. But, um, yeah, I suggest playing it. It's just, you know, it's just really weird. But it was pretty cool. Like, my girlfriend and I liked it quite a bit. We went through it in, like, two or three days, and he was all about it, you know. So, um, yep, I suggest trying it out if you ever have a PS2 and can find this game somewhere. Yeah, I, awesome. I, I love the couple of Clock Tower games I've played. And 
kind of on the top of my wish list right now is the Super Cam- Famicom version, the original one. Mm-hmm. And so the, this just being a part of that really makes me want to play it. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely good. I mean, you'd like it for sure. And really, like I said, it's got different... Every chapter's got like a different thing chasing the, the characters. So it's pretty... I feel like it stays like... You know, kind of like Dave was talking about earlier. It stays fresh throughout the games, you know, the game yeah. to end. You know, all the chapters are very different. And they always have like a weird boss fight. You have to... It's kind of like a puzzle every time you have to fight it because you just... You know, you don't have anything to fight it with except your dog. Mm-hmm. So is there no way to get uh, that game like on... On... PS4, 3, Vita. Nope. 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 Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> so they you had need a PS2. And, and 300 know, bones. Yeah, oh my <laughs> goodness. Hey, you know, but it's re- it's expensive for a reason. I'd say overall it, it's earned its cult status. You know, I, I know it's uh, a game that's kind of heavily on the Capcom, like, oh, let's remake this game, you know, and I think it's... No, like, that's cool. Like, I, it, it's cool that it's so collectible, but it's just like, you're right. You can't un- just go pick that up. You're going to un- be... Uh... <laughs> Unfortunately, I tend to choose things that are just obscure so when these every time we talk to these things it's just the way it goes but i i apologize but you should at least watch some play it or i don't know it's it's you know it's worth trying out for sure the problem with that game by the way is they couldn't find any good footage of it it was because oh. it's so <laughs> obscure and then it's very like i look up the trailer and it's just like pixelated as hell and i'm like well hey man <laughs> that's how the game looks lay off it all right <laughs> right that's just like the default that's fine yeah anyway uh, so. so sorry i forgot to mention on fatal frame um it was on ps2 and xbox Okay. Um, it's the Xbox version is backwards compatible on 360, not on Xbox One. So if you happen to have a 360 still, you can find those versions fairly cheap and get them. Or the PS2 versions you can actually get on the PSN through the PS3. That's actually what I recorded the footage on, and cool. I think they're like ten bucks on there. Um, and, so still pretty easy so to, you can to get. still get those. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I will say that Tecmo's already, I think, committed to making some Xbox games because I don't know if you guys saw, but the Xbox One is back for compatible with original Xbox games and they're adding things to that like every other month or so. Mm-hmm. But I think Ninja Gaiden's already on there. So I think Tecmo's kind of on board with that. So I wouldn't cool. be surprised if I saw some fatal frames on play Nice. Nice. Yep. Cool deal. All right. Well, we got one more pick for Scariest <laughs> Game. Yes. <laughs> It's Raul's pick, <laughs> so prepare yourself. He's not going to talk about it. He doesn't have any vocal cords, but he definitely <laughs> told me to let you guys know his scariest ge- or his scariest game he's ever played. My Little Pony Friendship Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> that is scary I, for a lot of reasons. I feel you, Raul. I Raul, feel you. it's all right, buddy. We got friendship your back. scares me too. <laughs> so that's Raul's uh, scariest pick. Uh, so that's it. That's our scariest picks. Let me uh, let me switch back to that real quick. Uh, Amnesia: Dark Descent, Fatal Frame, Haunting Ground, and you know Raul's pick there. But uh, <laughs> that's that's it. So let's move on to uh, bloodiest games. Um, this one is a lot broader category, I think, because. Well, it depends. So, first of all, one of the games is not a horror game, so that's okay. Uh, in theory, we wanted this the uh, horror, bloodiest horror games, but, you know, uh, when you think of bloody games, people think of different things, so we'll see. For me, I, I kind of had a tie, but I ended up going with uh, Evil Within, uh, which, nice. which, is, uh, which, which is pretty bloody. Uh, pretty gory if you've uh, mm-hmm. never played it uh i will say ahead of time that i'm going to show a video it has a lot of blood and like decapitation content so, warning yeah content <laughs> warning here that this is not <laughs> the best thing to watch if you don't like that kind of thing so just or if you're eating or <laughs> yeah or yeah so if you want just you know minimize us and listen and, and you know there's no <laughs> sound so we're good so, uh, you know, I, I don't really have to say much. I mean, every gunshot in Resident Evil, I mean, not Resident Evil, the Evil Within, <laughs> is just like explosions of blood. I mean, shotgun blast, pistol blast, it doesn't matter. It's just like blood and, and explosions everywhere. Um, I know, I'm, I know uh, there is a lot of like decapitations, limb removal, getting cut in half. <laughs> That like, video. yeah, yeah. There's blood splatter every like this. Uh, this one part in the video, he's sliding down a blood like 
<laughs> it's like a blood water slide. Like, what do you want? It's so bloody. It's so great. Anyways. Was, you will die a lot in that game, too, so you will experience many of these deaths. Yeah, and so I just, uh, I found a compilation video online that had, like, all the crazy, like, blood, bloody death stuff on it, so you can kind of see a few of them. But, like, like, you just, like, he just Fs you up, you know, you just get blood everywhere. So, <laughs> that was my pick. Um, there's not much to say about it. I mean, you know, go That's play awesome. it. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, my, my, uh, honorable mention for me was Dead Space. It's pretty bloody as well and gruesome, so... Yeah, uh, that was that I that you know I didn't I had a decision to make so I I picked Evil Within I thought it was a lot a lot uh, rougher so and anyway. just just to defend Evil Within it it has a lot of detractors there's there's a lot of Evil Within hate I think that's a really good game actually it's not perfect you know it's not super polished but I think it's a really entertaining game worth playing I, I challenge those haters to try the second one if they didn't like the first one because the first second one has improved a lot of the mechanics of the shooting as far as I think that stuff goes. Like I think it's a better game overall. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, Jimbo agrees. <laughs> he stuff. likes it. He's like, yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, uh, I believe it's Matt's turn. Or, yeah. Sorry, Borhammer. Yeah. Um. So my pick for bloodiest, I kind of cheated. It's uh, Bloodborne, a game about <laughs> blood. <laughs> hey, hey guys. So right. I mean, it, if you haven't played this game, this is probably the best game of this current generation. Um, what Whoa. you're seeing here is my boss fight with uh, one of the the DLC bosses, and I brought a couple randos in with me, and. Obviously, every attack you hit, there's just a spatter of blood. But what you'll see later is she actually starts using like this blood magic on herself, and she's just slinging bro- blood across the whole arena. It's like, it's super gross and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, what can I say that hasn't been said about this game? Like you, you heal yourself with blood. Um, there's just blood everywhere in this game. <laughs> it's and called blood. Love love with blood, don't you? This is one of those yeah. games I always wanted to play, but like uh, I can't, I'm no good at Dark Souls, so I don't even want to try any other games that are close. You know. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> this, this is one very, of those things. Very similar. Yeah, it it is. I mean, that this game, I think even people that don't like Dark Souls, um, people can pick this up and really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I heard it was. It, I heard it could be. It could be a little easier. Uh, depending on the weapons you use, but it, in ways, it, I think it's more about the combat style. Where this is faster and more aggressive, where cool. Dark Souls is much more defensive. Yeah, there she goes with her b- crazy blood attacks. We we actually have a good friend that hated Dark Souls but really enjoyed Bloodborne and went through it twice actually. So I, cool. I think there's something to be said about the fact it's pretty uh, a little bit more uh, I guess you know welcoming for someone that's not really into the Dark Souls. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, for sure. Good to hear. Okay. Cool. This is, uh, we'll go to our next one, I suppose. Sure. Okay. Well, mine I cheated because I was gonna say Dead Space, but I was like, you know what? That's boring because uh, you know I figured <laughs> I figured David over here would say that, but I chose Ninja Gaiden Two, which is not a scary game at all, but it is very very overly bloody. Like the whole like the whole marketing of that game was like watching videos of people, you know, him going and killing groups of enemies, and there's literally blood everywhere. And he just every time you finish combat, he just shakes the blood off his weapons and his arms, and he just you go on, you know, to the next thing you're doing. And I thought that was, uh, you know, when I thought of blood, when I think of blood, I think of that game because that game was just carnage. Like the whole point of that game is just, you know, execution moves, fast paced, killing monster after monster after monster as fast as you can. And then dead everywhere, basically. Their limbs all over the place, their head yeah. everywhere. Uh, it's uh, pretty, pretty bloody. I, um, yeah, I remember watching you play this game. It was actually when we lived together, it came out and mm-hmm. you were playing at the time and I just walk through the living room and see it, and there's just blood all over the screen. It's it's actually it's nuts how much blood there is in that game, and I mean to me it's it, it makes it kind of just you know it, it's goof, it's over the top. And Ninja Gaiden One, as far as like the story was always over the top, and they kind of took the next step as far as making it just over the top with combat as far as the stuff goes. So much so that when they re-release it for PS3, like a year later, they actually toned the blood down because it was just just insane how much Pretty blood much. there was. In- yeah, and you know, like, because you're using the claws, he's got that weapon. He just just ripping their heads off with each little swipe, and they're like, "Geez, man, this is crazy." So, um, yeah, I just think of blood, and you know, that game is really fun, by the way. That whole series, I think, is really cool. But you know, if you want a bloody time, it's the <laughs> that's my choice of uh, blood games. And I you mean, know, like, 
Yeah, he's just decapitating dudes left and right over here. It's all he does. He just goes around and just <laughs> chops their legs off. And, you know, what I thought of Dead Space, you know, that was the whole thing is the limbs coming off. And, you know, uh, that's kind of one of their big things. But this game reminded me of that in an earlier setting because it was just like weapons and swords and killing things. I don't know. It was just cool. Yeah. No. And it, it's not a horror game, but the difficulty in these games is scary. Horror. It's horror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I did, the yeah. scary part. It'll put it'll make you have trouble sleeping because it was like God, this game pisses me off so much. Hard. I remember, was it this one or the third one where you were getting so frustrated? Yeah, I think you probably spent honest. like two hours trying to get past the same part. Oh, it's, it's, and I was like, dude, just take a break. <laughs> and then you did, and like as soon as you came back to it, you you beat like it. One shot, yeah. Just yeah, needed, that's, uh, that's how it goes. Yeah, I tried refresh. to play on the harder difficulty, and that was one of the worst. I've made some bad decisions in my lifetime, but that's one of them. <laughs> definitely one of them. Uh, playing Ninja Gaiden 2 on hard. That was not a good idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, good game. Uh, it's like 5 bucks on the 360 if you have a 360, or 10 bucks on the PS3, or like 15 bucks on the Vita. So easy to nice. get. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can still you can still do it. But if All you right. want the blood, you got to get the 360 version. Yep. All right, are we ready for Raul's second pick of the night? Let's hear it. Raul, he told me that his bloodiest game he's ever played, Little's Pet Shop for Wii. <laughs> specifically the Wii version, yes. The Wii version specifically, okay? Is it Little's Pet Shop of Horrors, maybe? <laughs> Feed me. Uh, Raul, you, you are a son of a bitch, Raul. He, he's a troublemaker. He is a troublemaker, yeah. All right, uh, let's go on. Let's move on to our horror dud. Uh, I like to do a little oh, bit of little bit of bad before the good, you know, because you know we'll do dud and then favorite of all time. Uh, cool. I uh, I when when we talked about this, like I immediately thought of this game as a horror <laughs> dud, and uh, it's a game that I ended up. Here's the worst part, and this always happens, I think. I bought this game like a four pack to play with people, right? Mm -hmm. So I spent, <laughs> I didn't pay the price of the game once. I paid, paid the price of the game four times, all right? <laughs> we pick up the game, we get in the game. It's so bad that nobody wants to play it right off the bat. So we return, <laughs> like, we return it, you know, except for me. I keep my copy, but I ask everybody else to return it so I get my money back, <laughs> right? And so uh, that game. Is called Alone in the Dark Illumination, and I Sorry, was jiggly. Jiggly I, thought it was Vermintide. I uh, <laughs> look, Vermintide. We could talk about it at a different time, but this is this is horror <laughs> games. This is horror <laughs> games, okay? Um, so the problem I had with this game uh, is the same problem that everybody apparently had with this game. Um, I looked around to see if it had gotten better. Uh, Basically, after a couple of months, they just stopped supporting it. You know, I guess it didn't make enough money, I guess. Uh, I've never even surprising. heard of this game. You don't yeah. want to hear about this game. It's terrible. <laughs> so, uh, there's no story, really, at all. You're just basically going through these maps, you know, uh, killing killing uh, undead, essentially. Uh, but the whole concept was you were supposed to use light. The only way you could kill, like, the zombies and the undead was if they were in light. So, does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. the problem is it's just, it was really poorly made. Like the, the gunplay is terrible. Um, the, uh, the AI sucks. Like you would think the things that get killed in the light would just, you know, try to avoid it, but they just walk straight through it like a, like fucking idiots. You know, um, <laughs> there was a ton of bugs. Oh, there was a ton of bugs, but one of the bigger bugs is things would just attack you through the wall. And uh, they never fixed it. That's still a bug, by the way. You can still have that that experience if you like, if you want to go purchase this game. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, and it was it was a co op game. That's why I bought it. So I wanted to play it. I was like, oh, cool, a Alone in the Dark game with like multiple people. This this might be nice. Um, you'll notice in this video right now how how uh, how terrible the gun is. Like he's literally wasting full clips to kill one one zombie. <laughs> but anyways, so that uh, that. The enemies have to be in light to kill them. I think they ripped off from Alan Wake. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you could kill them out of the light, but it's, like, super, super difficult. Like, okay. Very it's funny because that series was a 
well-respected series for a while then i feel like the ps1 version and the dreamcast version came out and it just wasn't very popular and then now you got this version which i assume came out after that well yeah i it wasn't popular but i think that game it's called uh the new nightmare alone in the dark new nightmare that's the playstation and dreamcast one okay. i actually really like that game i never beat it because it was pretty hard but i really liked it and that's what i was going to say if you want to play a good alone in the dark game you can actually get that on steam for like seven bucks nice yeah it's pretty cheap I think Not this. I think this fucking game is still like twenty or thirty. Like wow. they never reduced the price. Like they just left it. They're just like, you know what? <laughs> they're trying they forgot to about it. Somebody Co-op might buy it. Good, it's dude. fine. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, zombie <laughs> fi- zombie vampires. That's right. Yeah. So wow. that's my pick. Um, it, you know, I don't know. It's just it was just poorly made, and they they didn't really support it. Um, and it, it's a co-op it game. Cool. Yeah, it's a co-op game where uh, you can't play co-op because nobody's playing it. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's also sucks. So, anyway. Have fun playing by yourself. Yeah, have, bad, have a good so time. Have a good time. Don't buy it. All right, so we will now move on to boards. Okay. <clears throat> I got lots to say about this one. <laughs> this is a good pick, by the way. My horror dud, and this may sound surprising if you know me, is Resident Evil 6. I did not like this game uh a lot of people didn't like this game to me it just 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 gameplay alone was not nearly as tight or polished as four and five was um and besides that what frustrated me the most and what you'll see in the video this is the intro sequence you play at the very beginning of the game i i picked this because literally the first action you take in this game is a quick time event. Yeah, baby. So the I call this game Quick Time Event Simulator 2012 because <laughs> at any point in the game, like any point, you're just going to have a button prompt prompt pop up and you never know what it's going to be, you never know what it's for. You're lucky if you pull it off the first time. Uh you're more than likely going to fail it, die and then have to reload and do it again just cuz you know finally, oh, you know, I got to press this. It's so frustrating. Like, it's sad when the scariest part of this game is the tension of not knowing which quick time event is going to pop up. <laughs> which like, button do I need to have, press? <laughs> yeah. Am I going to have to mash the button? Am I going to have to time it? You just don't know. I mean, I I love Resident Evil. Anybody that knows me knows that. And this game was just such a disappointment. And such a letdown. They made a lot of good games. Let's put that and out they, there. They made too. a lot of good games. They made yeah. a lot of good ones. And so I. I have to say, I, I don't actually think this game is a terrible game. It it has some redeeming qualities. It's fun to play co-op, at least. You know, it's clunky. The controls just don't feel real tight to me. But it's entertaining. You know, you, you can still play it and have fun. But it's not scary. It just did not feel like a Resident Evil game. Even after 4 and 5 kind of really took it in that action direction, um, it, it, it still just doesn't feel like a resident evil game to me i i say it takes the resident out of resident evil which i know that's you know the japanese title is biohazard so that doesn't really work but um you know you there's like three different campaigns you play with a pair of characters in each and it spans literally spans the globe you're in like i think the u.s russia and china in the different campaigns and so you know not very resident (laughs) um so yeah i just found it frustrating and disappointing overall and yeah that game was a colossal failure as far as i'm you know i think the capcom was concerned i know it just didn't do what they wanted to do you know they'd come off five which was a great game you know a lot of momentum off that and six looked like fell on its face too ambitious i think with all the campaigns they, mm-hmm. i don't know it just didn't really work out but you know i will give capcom credit because seven was well received that's how a lot of people would have given up on that series after that but they uh seven kind of turned it around and it looked like it, oh yeah you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tons of six, people love seven. Yeah, it's because it's good, you know. But six then, what was not... after that? What was that newest one that just came out that everybody didn't like? I forget what it's called. Newest one? Was that after... the? Well, there's a few that came out that were like, you know, they made the Revelation series that what were kind of called like, this... oh. Raccoon City or some shit. Oh, Operation Raccoon City. <laughs> the, that was their attempt at a at a multiplayer uh, shooter game. Oh and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those those are terrible. Yeah, that's why well, it just reminded me of that. Cause... Yeah. They're making Resident Evil 2 remake, which is a good idea. And then Resident Evil 7 came out last year, which was a great game. So overall, yeah. I think yeah. kind of right in the ship. 
I, I'm so hyped for the Resident Evil 2 remake. Uh, first, if you haven't played Resident Evil 7, go play it. Go watch a playthrough. Um, it's so good. Uh, Resident Evil 2 is using the same engine as that game, um, but it won't be first person. Uh, it's it's a third person. Perfect October game. Oh, yeah. True that. If you're doing <laughs> some October streaming, you should definitely check that one out. For sure. Good pick. That game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on to Nakotas. Now, or... I will give Bork credit here for playing through his pick because uh, I <laughs> David, I could tell, did not, and I for sure did not because I hated Deadly Premonition. Oh, I, came... I, I I don't even have my pick anymore. I, I definitely returned it after a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, this this game was a it came out twenty dollars. First bad sign should have known right off the bat it was going to be bad. But you know, I gave it a shot because you know I'd heard you know there's some IGN had always said, hey, it's a hidden gem. It's got you know, a Twin Peaks feel with uh, some, you know, zany action scenes and stuff. I'm like, oh, man, this sounds really cool. Well, you know, the first thing you do in that game is you're in some insane dream where you see two little twin angels sitting on some swinging chair. And I'm like, what, what is happening right now? It's kind of like the dream sequence I imagine in Twin Peaks, how he imagined it, the developer, game, how insane it was. He's like, I'm going to make my own version of this crazy, stupid dream sequence. And it, that took me like 20 minutes to get through, by the way, because I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> Anyway, when I finally got to the point where I was walking around, I was like, okay, this is awful. And then you get to the shooting part, and that's awful. But then it really gets bad when you get in the car and start driving. And it's just it just, just keeps going downhill about how bad that game is. And, you know, the story seems interesting. Bort can probably uh, – I think he finished his game. And, yeah, uh, I, I played there with a friend. Doing it, you know, because it's I couldn't even get that far. But I, I just <laughs> thought the enemy design was very stupid. The character was not interesting. You know, I know it tried to go for the Twin Peaks, like, oh, it's the weird city – something weird's going on but i was like i'm not gonna even give this yeah i tried it for about an hour and a half and i remember my friend was over he's like what what is this you could be doing anything else your time and you'd probably be having a better time i was like yeah (laughs) so um you know again there's people in this world that think it's a very underrated game and they like it a lot which is you know great and i you know i applaud them because i'm sure it's got a lot of great qualities but I couldn't see through the just the game itself being how bad it was you know especially when i got done playing alan wake around the same time which is a much better game which i think kind of has a similar premise overall yeah. um but it's just a a far superior game cool. so yeah the, i was gonna say that it's such a polarizing game either you love it or you hate it i it, okay i agree with everything you're saying but i <laughs> love this game <laughs> it's it's just so funny to me like it's the only way the... to enjoy this game is to not take it seriously gotcha yeah um you mentioned the twin peaks stuff he obviously was super inspired by twin peaks and david lynch stuff yeah um because it just it, it wears that on its sleeve for sure the entire... um but it's silly the combat's terrible driving, <laughs> driving. the the driving isn't even driving it's, it's like just... getting lucky God, it's terrible. <laughs> that's right. That's where I drew the line. I was like, I cannot do this. Yeah. It... Again, I I applaud you for getting through, it, and that, that is impressive. And that's one of the best things you should put in your game or anything part because it, it sucks. <laughs> Sorry, so, your, your mic cut out. But I mean, he, I I was I, shitting on it more. Don't yeah, worry. yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and for the record, I I watched a friend play this. I didn't play it myself, so maybe that helped me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was a lot better that way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like, yes. overall, yeah, I would just say the other thing I was saying basically is you should applaud yourself for getting through it from start to finish. That's something that's a feat in itself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, don't play it. it sucks. Don't, don't play it. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll do Raul's pick real quick. Raul, yes, uh, he's, he gave me a, another classic, classic pick. Is it Imagine Babies? And his horror dud <laughs> is... All the Stalker series. That's his oh, origin. <laughs> dang. Raul's going to get some hate for Raul's that. Raul's going to make There's me some lose followers. Like those games. Uh, <laughs> now, Raul is just trolling like normal. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I mean, how, how are you going to scare a skeleton? Really? <laughs> yeah, he en- <laughs> he thought that game was great. What is, you know, it wasn't scary at all. So, you know, it's fine. Uh, all right, cool. Well, let's go with our favorites of all time now. Um Hopefully uh, we got some good picks here, so we'll see we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll start. I guess we'll start with me as usual. Uh, my game is old, so I apologize in advance. But you know that's how it happens sometimes. Uh, mine is System Shock. Uh, actually, two. I mean, 
I liked both, but two more so than mm-hmm. than, than one. Nice. Um, System Shock, in my opinion, had a lot of good uh, ideas. You know, uh, that had really been done, at least in its era, you know. Uh, it was an RPG, first of all. Uh, so it was a horror-like RPG game, right? You'd level up um, and get skills and stuff like that. So it was it's really cool. Um, I like that. Um, you get, like, different upgrades, like cybernetic upgrades and stuff like that, you know, that kind of help define your character. Um, you and, and it changed the way you play the game, you know? So I, I like that aspect that it had, like, an RPG element. This doesn't look very scary, by the way, uh, but, <laughs> but it's, it's it's pretty good. Um, the thing about it was that it had a lot of limited resources, and I do want to point out that I, this is in the horror genre. It, I didn't mark it as my scariest because it's not my scariest, but I think it's still a really good horror game. So that's, mm-hmm. that, just to remind you, it's not necessarily the scariest or the bloodiest, just your, your favorite. You know, favorite. Yeah. So... Uh, I just really liked it. Uh, it keeps you really limited on resources, like guns deteriorate, so like you can't shoot them that often. Um, oh wow! And you have to be, you have to repair them or or replace them, you know. <laughs> so a lot of times you really find yourself using like a wrench, like to defend yourself, you know, um, or kill stuff. So you have to you have to get creative with like how you uh, approach monsters and like kind of like hide behind things or. Or just circumvent them, stuff like that. You're not always just blasting away, which I think helps on the horror side, you know, uh, where you're not just eliminating things. Um, But I also like that, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a solo it's a solo experience, right? So a lot of horror games are like this, but you're 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 by yourself. Everything else in in the uh, ship is like you know either undead or cyborg or whatever and you're you're the only person left alive basically so that that helps add to the to the horror as well you know nice um what was also cool is you kind of see in the video they populated like all the rooms with stuff that you could even pick up but not necessarily use right like there'll just be like glasses and stuff there so the the world feels like it's lived in you know there's yeah. there's items you can pick up and grab, but they do absolutely nothing for you. So it's just nice that they added those type of things, which you see a lot in these days, like Skyrim and stuff. But again, this game is pretty old. It's from uh, 96? Like 96. 96. Yeah, yeah, yeah 96. I think that's right. So uh, it's, it's pretty old. So, um, But it's still... It's actually pretty fun. I, I, uh, I installed it the other day just to, to try it out again. Um, you can get there on the PC and get some mods that kind of like help the graphics and stuff. But what was actually nice is this, this is original game footage. And if you notice the graphics aren't bad, Mm -hmm. uh, but Mm -hmm. that's because of what they like. I don't, I was reading on it It was some, some way they did graphics. They're all like the levels are pre burnt. So like you could use better graphics, you know, and get away with it. It, You Mm -hmm. know, it wasn't like loading on the fly or whatever. So, anyways, the, the graphics aren't too bad for a game that old. So, yeah. anyways, uh, it was just it had a lot of details in it, and just the the way the combat style was, I really liked. Uh, I love the storytelling. It's a it's a, a lot of it's through audio logs, you know, um, of the different crew members on the ship, mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, uh, the AI computer, you know, one of those, t- yeah, one of those uh, top. Uh, you know, everybody everybody likes to use an AI computer, you know, but uh, I really like... It goes evil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It becomes <laughs> self-aware or whatnot, and that's kind of the that, that that's kind of the premise of the game. But uh, I, I mean, if it tells you anything, I, I've never played this game. It's one of those that I've kind of always had on my to-do list. List, yeah. Um, but for not having played it, like, I know who the villain is because, you know, it's that so big of a deal. Big of a deal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I will mention two things about this game that I know. <clears throat> it's on every list of top 200 games or whatever I see. It's always somewhere, so it's very appreciated even after the fact. And I imagine if it would come out, you know, had it come out kind of a newer version, it come out in the 2000s, the console era when it was getting bigger, it probably would have blown up. Because look at Bioshock. Bioshock was a great game, but they took a lot from Shock. They did, yeah. And mm-hmm. you could tell, and that game was it was very popular. Bioshock One is still one of the most like beloved games that have come out. You know, um, for in most circles of shooter fans, RPG, whatever you want to put 
that genre in. But um, and you know that guy, you know he he made System Shock, right? He same dude. Ken Levine. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, I think that is a a love letter to that game, which you know, I I think now people looking back back probably would have uh, interested in playing it. But um, I think I read that someone owns the rights to that series, so maybe they'll make another one at some point or remake. But mm. yeah, I just know System Shock again. I never even knew what it was until about you know the Bioshock days. But now I've heard all about it. Like Matt, like Laporte said, he knows kind of the story and stuff. And for a game that we never played and probably didn't know about until you know much after, way well after the fact, it's pretty impressive that it's still kind of like touted as a great game this day. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, I've always been interested in trying it out too. Yeah, definitely recommend trying it out. I mean, like I said, it's. It's going to be dated because it's 96, but like if you look, the graphics are sometimes one of the bigger issues, and it's not too bad. You know, it's not you, terrible. You're <laughs> talking to the two biggest back in the bullshit <laughs> play retro games, we guys. Play old shit you're like, we love all the old shit. Let's do I that. I told you I was yeah. playing Majora's Mask. The game came out with 98. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. playing two days ago, so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, yeah, definitely check that one out. It's pretty good. Nice. Cool. Good call. Good pick. All right. Uh, I think next is going to be Bortz, right? All right. I'm trying to keep my cat from jumping on the desk, so excuse me, but uh, I'll try to get through this. Should uh, hear about this game? Yeah. My, my all-time favorite, which this isn't going to be a surprise to anybody that knows me, is Resident Evil HD. Um, so this is specifically the HD version of the remake you know, of the 1996 original. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw my cat down. Um, I absolutely love this game. Um, now, I I have really fond memories of playing the original, the 1996 version on PlayStation. Um, I know Jimbo, shocking, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so already Resident Evil like just held a special place in my heart. Um, when the remake came out for GameCube in 2002... I just fell in love with the game all over again. Uh, the game looked absolutely incredible, even at the time. And then, you know, they released it again in 2015 with an HD makeover, and guess what? It still looks really freaking fantastic. <laughs> Th- this game just holds up so well. Um, I-, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, Resident Evil obviously kind of pioneered the whole survival horror genre, and... Uh, I think horror games ever since have really kind of been following in its footsteps Um, for a series that could have become stale. I think by having, by doing this remake, they really showed that this, the, just the core gameplay itself really has staying power and and it's worth something even in today's, uh, you know, vast gaming, uh, you know, the swath of different games you could play these days. Sure. This one still really holds up. Yep. Uh, even the tank controls, like, I don't care what you say. <laughs> Anybody that hates tank controls, no, it, it works for this game. <laughs> and if you hate it, the this version, the remake, and, you know, the HD version here has an optional uh, control scheme where you can, you know, use the joystick to point in whatever direction you want to go. Yeah. Um, but gosh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what else I can really say about this game that hasn't been said before, but I absolutely love it. Uh, I When I recorded this footage, this is from the beginning, but I sat down to, you know, only record maybe 15 minutes. I ended up playing for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, I noticed this how... video was like longer than all the rest. So I was like, huh. <laughs> it's just how much I love this game. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I've played it ad nauseum and I just can't get enough of it. Every time I sit down to play, I love it all over again. Yeah, no, I mean, that was one of my best impulse buys if, as a young child. Is 2002, I went and bought the uh, GameCube remake or maybe 2001. Um, and yeah, that game looked incredible. That game was, I mean, I was shocked how good that game looked on the GameCube. I was blown away how good the visuals looked in the pre rendered background. Um, I had never really gone through any of those games before. I played one, two, and three kind of sparingly because I never owned those games. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that game was awesome. It was a. Uh, I liked the story as dumb as goofy as the voice acting was. I thought that the, <laughs> it was interesting. You know, I, I liked the the zombies, like the way you had to burn them to kind of. Otherwise, they'd come back. I thought it was a really cool mechanic. That I didn't expect the first time I played that. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it had a good amount of challenge. You know, the characters had two different campaigns, so that's awesome for replay value right off the bat. Um, I liked uh, both characters quite a bit. I felt like I, man, I was going through that game. I got like all the costumes unlocked and that required like four playthroughs, I think. And yeah, so yeah, I definitely can. I mean, just it really immerses you very quickly. Just, you know, 
just from the get go, I think the the mansion's cool, the characters are cool, the zombie, the aspect of zombies. That was the first time I'd really thought of zombies in anything. Like, you know, I'd never really watched movies at that age. I was this is the first exposure, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah the, the, this was before it was like just done to death. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, cool to like zombies. Did yeah. you see Kovic <laughs> freaking Barry? <laughs> I I love Barry Burton. Barry Burton's cool, but yeah, no, I I that's a good pick. I, I think it's good. And like, uh, actually, so uh, one of my friends came over like two or three months ago, and he just wanted to play it. And we went through that game that night. We went through it in like two and a half hours. He's really good at it. Not as good as you bought it probably, but <laughs> you know it's pretty close. Uh, but he uh, he flew through it real fast, and you know it's one of those games you play it, you love it, and I feel like it kind of you know I think it stands out as far as the the genre goes. You know, like you said, pioneered a lot of the. Uh, HD remake, I'm sure, is easy to get. Very easy absolutely. To get. Yeah, I it's mean, on PS4, Xbox One, PC, I think. Yeah, every every system right now, except for Switch, and with the way they're releasing stuff for Switch, it'll probably be on there soon. Soon, yeah. I, yeah. I'd be surprised <laughs> if it wasn't. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's a good game. Cool. Awesome deal. All right, are we gonna go with uh, um, a Scarlet's pick now? Yeah, I mean, if you guys know me at all, this is one of my favorite games of all time. It's Silent Hill 2. I think it's uh, it was like my first PS2 game I got. I got that, Mill Your Solid and Final Fantasy X, I, best Christmas ever. But, uh, Great pick. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was the, I, I, was, I had set for like four or five months in those games. So, But uh, that game is uh, – so what I like about it is the atmosphere is incredible. Like I, I remember I was blown away by the, the fog, the way it looked, and the lighting in that game for a PS2 game. I was just like – you know, I played the first one maybe a year before that. And it was quite a jump as far as the, the way the game looked and how it was presented and the, the lighting and the fog are the main things. I can't stress enough how it made it where you couldn't see too far ahead of you and it made it like instantly scarier than just anything I'd done in the first game. Um, the monster design was awesome. I liked the way everything looked and it was just creepy. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I didn't even really understand playing it the first few times, but kind of looking back and some of the ways like they made the monsters represent different parts of, you know, the main characters, just the way he thinks of, you know, people or some of his past problems he had. Um, the NPC characters were really interesting. They all, there was like three or four of them, but they all had really crazy reasons for being there. And, um, you know, all that came together really well. And it was really unique in the sense that you talked to them three times, but you kind of really learned a lot about them in those three little instances. You know, they, their stories all kind of, you know, tied up pretty well as far as their own little personal story. And, you know, it was interesting. And like the conclusion, to all those stories were all very, just again, just unexpected as far as I was concerned. And I really like, you know, they stood out to me. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a big jump from the first game, which I thought the first game had good NPCs, but the second game, the way they did it, as far as they're all kind of just their own characters and their own doing their own thing and they're here for the, their own reasons, I thought was pretty cool. Um, the music's good in that game. There's a lot of cr- really great tracks that I can, you know, remember just to this day. And I, I thought it really made the effects, uh, you know, the atmosphere and kind of the immersion oh, yeah. even better. And then, uh, you know, like I said, the, the standalone story. So you had to play the first game to go through it, which I thought was cool because, you know, I loved the first game. I thought it was, you know, I liked it better than the Resident Evil because it was kind of the scarier version opposed to more of the action. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I just thought the second game had done so much better. And, you know, I didn't even really appreciate it that much till kind of after the fact. And, you know, just going back and, you know, the endings were all uh, explaining parts of the game and really kind of putting it all together after you go through it a few times was just, I don't know, I just, uh, it's very memorable. It's probably one of my favorite games of all time. And, you know, I go through it probably once a year and um, I just, I suggest to anybody that likes that type of game and, Kind of like Bort said, uh, they remade it on PS3, but you can kind of use the tank controls or go the newer type of controls if you don't like the old one. But um, sure. it's just, it's a really, you know, I think to this day, if you play it, it's still pretty scary. There's a couple scenes in that game that I say, even to this day, I just, I, every time I go through it towards the end, I just like, there's a part where you're in a hotel and like, I don't know, you go in a room, you come back and everything's messed up and it's like, I don't know, the music plays and it's just, it's really good. And yeah, I know, I, the last boss I... was cool. I, I was gonna say that this probably could have easily been either of our scariest pick as well. Oh yeah, like, yeah. It, it, and it's not even any one moment in the game. It's right. just the entire way through. The atmosphere is incredible. Like mm-hmm. it's tense the whole time. Yeah, yeah and like cool. I said, this was this was my scariest game. I still don't put it twice. Honestly, I could have picked Silent Hill for all this stuff. To be honest, like yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I I like I think it does everything very well as far as the horror stuff goes. And it's it's a shame that the series kind of died down. Because I think there's a lot of potential in that series, and if they would have just kind of really put their focus on that, like they did with some of their other series, like Metal Gear Solid, I think it to this like they kind of missed the big genre, the horror jump, as far as the people really liking that genre more and more these days. Mm-hmm. And again, they come out maybe a little bit later, like you know, look at PT, that was like a demo, and people were just flipped out about that, just because yeah. they put a little bit of budget behind it. And guess what? Awesome, you know. And 
Uh, it's just right. unfortunate that, like I said, they kind of died down. But that second game is holds up great to this day. Even if you play the PS2 version, I think it still holds up pretty well. And um, you know, it's a quick. You know, those games are never that long, but they're uh, you know they're very interesting. And you know, if you really want to, you watch somebody play it. I think you really miss a lot of stuff unless you've gone through a few times and really kind of you know all details that he puts in the game. The you know Konami did, and I just I, I can't suggest it enough. I, I think it's a very good game. Yeah, and I, I think like you, most people have come to realize how appreciative uh, they should be of this game now. Um, it, it wasn't as appreciated in its time, but these days you see it all over, you know, top games lists, whether it be horror games or just games in general. Yeah. Like it's it's always on those. Yeah, and like you said, I think whenever even when I played it, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. I mean, I could tell how awesome it was, but it just never really was like the, the top game for me. But I, as I got older, I was like, wow, this was way ahead of its time and, just, uh, yeah and the the story too like it's it's really really mature like oh, super yeah it, it's basically about mental illness and mm -hmm. the way it handles it is really interesting yeah and you, it's hard to really pick up on those things unless you played a few times and kind of really start kind of looking at some of the stuff that's being said in the game like the writings and stuff and really it's funny because as you go through it more and more there's like stuff you can read in the game that kind of written off you can't see it but as you get further in it you can see more david's like no don't put your hand in the hole <laughs> i'm not what? doing it if it asks me to oh, investigate oh, okay. i'm yeah. like nope yeah. not yeah. investigating <laughs> done with the game turn it off do that. it's like oh <laughs> but yeah that game is awesome there's a lot of moments i can think of but really the last hour of that game is it's, it's one of the best hours of a game i can imagine i just love it i just think it's really good and you know, like I said, the little small stuff you're doing throughout the game changes the ending drastically, and hmm. it's just one of those things I didn't know about unless, you know, I bought a guide after I beat it, and I was like, wow, that's crazy how much is into this game, and it's so, it's packed into a very small package, but it's, uh, yeah, like Matt, like Bort said, the story's kind of, it's way more mature than I think people let on for a long time, and just like all the enemies have, there's a reason why they look the way they look, and there's a lot to it, so there's a whole level of depth that I just don't see in games, even now, so. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. That's, Great that sounds pick. like a good pick. My problem with this this episode is I'm limited like to five horror games I've ever played. You know? <laughs> That's so all right. Like, you scary. guys are talking about all the cool ones, and I'm like, "Hey, oh, we, we're giving you good. some ideas." Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have have fun trying to play this one, David. <laughs> all right. Uh, last but not least, we'll we'll get Raul's pick. Uh, his favorite of all time, which <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but I'm sure it's gonna be good, Raul. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Barbie video game hero, Raul. Oh my gosh, what a guy! Watch out, boys. That is <laughs> Raul's favorite of all time horror game right there. So, just FYI, wow, you know, you just know what's scary, Raul? The objectification of women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. And yes, Calfier and Wow is very scary. It's the scariest game. Yeah, he's like, wow, I spent all this money on this game? What am I thinking? <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. More like I spent hundreds of hours for what? <laughs> <laughs> My life. All right, so uh, let's look at our picks one more time just so everybody can check them out. These are our uh, scariest and bloodiest picks. Uh, I didn't do any. Oh, uh, scariest for Raul MLP stands for My Little Pony, just in case you're looking for that one. <laughs> <laughs> And then let me show you guys the horror duds and all-time favorites. Uh, AITD is Alone in the Dark. That's the only one I had to abbreviate there. So the name's so long, I just can't fit it in there. <laughs> so there's our horror duds and all-time favorites. So good cool. stuff. Yeah. So that's that. That was fun. I like I like doing that one. Uh, the horror games make sense for the theme. But then I just realized that in two weeks we have another podcast and what the hell am I going to do? It's closer to Halloween than this one. Oops. But we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We're going to do something. Uh, anyway, so cool. Well, uh, yeah, so that was great. Let's do a little bit of gaming news real quick. A couple things happened in the past couple of weeks I want to get to. Cool. Um, one thing that I think you guys will have a lot more to say about than me, although I have a little bit to say about it, is they did announce the PlayStation Classic. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, Sony jumping on that bandwagon with Nintendo makes sense, I think, but, uh, what do you guys, what are your initial thoughts, um, you know, to the PlayStation classic, uh, cost game library, like, what do you guys think? Um, my, my initial thought is, oh, th this is kind of pointless, <laughs> but I'm going to get it anyways. 
<laughs> like well, it, it's, that's it's, what it's, that's what they're banking on. Everybody exactly, being a sucker for nostalgia, which is nostalgia there's nothing sucker. wrong with that. But yeah, N- yeah, nostalgia and collectors, and they get me with both. Um, and I, I say pointless because like a lot of those games, I, I guarantee you they're not going to hold up as well as they do in people's memories. Um, not to mention you can get a lot of them for those that still have a PS3, um, or a Vita or a PlayStation TV, actually, uh, you, a lot you of can, <laughs> you can very cheaply buy a lot of the original PlayStation library, um, and play them much more accessibly than you would on a mini version of a console not to mention as you can see this is not the dualshock version of the controller yeah. so that actually limits what the library can be sure uh one um, thing i wanted to bring up uh real quick did they have they thrown out a full list yet no, no. so we still only know like the initial like what was it five, five i think yeah. it was five yeah it was yeah. um oh my gosh it was wall arms Wild final fantasy seven tekken three Tekken 3, Racer, Jumping Flash. Ridge Racer. And Ridge Racer. Okay, so that's the five. And, um, I expect we'll see, like, Tomb Raider, maybe a Twisted Metal. Castlevania, if we're lucky... Probably. What'd you say? I assume Castlevania, since that's see, been on the other classics. I don't think Castlevania, because... And this is actually a new story we have coming up. Konami just announced a collection they're releasing on PS4 with Symphony in the Night and Rondo of Blood. Um, and... I don't know, just from a business perspective, I don't see them trying to cut into their sales. Though maybe they wouldn't because it's such a different product. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, the uh, the one thing I'll say about it is uh, the problem is that I like the three of the games a lot that are on there. I mean, I'm sure Tekken doesn't hold. There's been four other ones since then, and Tekken 7 is a far superior game at this point. Yeah. Final Fantasy 7 is great, but there's better versions that have better quality of life. You know, standards they've kind of made better on Steam, PS4. And they're releasing it actually on the Switch and Xbox One very soon as well. And the uh, Wild Arms is, uh, I think, one of the most underappreciated games on the PS1. But the problem is, you know, again, I mean, I'm not going to buy a console for that. I can play it on my Vita, right? Yes. Um, sure. Right. But I, I like, like Board said, I'm the same way. I'm going to, I know I'm going to buy it and I'll probably play it. And, you know, I'll probably go through those games again on that system like I did with the <laughs> SNES Classic. But um, I think it's a good idea. I mean, those things sell. You know, people get excited about that stuff. And, you know, to be honest, and there's a lot of people that don't play games that are older now. But they will play those older games because they like that stuff. And to them, it's not going to require them to learn how to play something new. It's something mm-hmm. they've played before and they like. They don't have to worry about you know, learning the controls. Like, I, I see it all the time and where I work that people like playing that stuff. And they just don't – it's not that they can't do it. They just refuse to learn new stuff. And you know, that's how old people are sometimes. I'm Me and Board are the same way when it comes to new stuff. But yeah, um, yeah. It, it's, just, it's easy for them to play because they, they don't need to worry about learning how to play Crash Bandicoot, whatever's going to be on there. So it's – yeah, it's, it's uh, also ease of access. Um, mm-hmm. Now, like right. you were saying, at least on the PlayStation 1, a lot of these games you can already get through your current devices, so ease of access may not be as big of a deal here, but uh, I think that's how the Nintendo ones kind of did well. And the other thing I want to say really is that 3D is the one, this is like the one system I think that holds it the worst as far as like going back, because Nintendo and SNES, those games... Uh, they hold up pretty well. They're 2D. They're not really that hard to kind of get back into it, and they don't need to, to really impress you as far as the way they, they look. But sure. 3D graphics early on didn't look very good, and I think that's going to be kind of be like, oh, I played this game. Like Every time you look at it, <laughs> even now it's like, oh. like it, Them it, hands. It, Them hands yeah, so yeah, good. The hands, I know, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and if you look at, like, Wild Arms looks pretty good because it's got a 2D look, and then you get in battle, and it's got this 3D look, and it's ugly. So oh, yeah. Ugly. So it's just like, and I mean, nothing that's, I think that game is really a fantastic, just <laughs> the 2D part of it looks great, but the 3D looks just, uh, I don't know. So that's yeah. the one thing I think it'd be a problem, but see. yeah. What do you think about the price? It's going to be a hundred bucks, right? It, it's steep. I mean, that's, that's five bucks a game, right? 20 games. Yeah. Um, and it's, when you, I guess if you think about it that way, that's not terrible, especially if you consider part of that cost is the hardware itself. Sure. Um, but I mean, Nintendo did it cheaper than that, so it's kind of hard to justify charging yeah. more than they would at this point. And the problem is also it doesn't even come with the brick that you need to put, like it's like the power cord, power. it's got the cord, but yeah. not the actual no power adapter. Yeah, yeah. I get everyone's got one, but come on, really? You're gonna... <laughs> yeah. I know. 
I love these short cables too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they they better not be that but, short. But Nintendo, Nintendo did the same thing. So we'll just true. We'll, well, we'll they're just... really bad about theirs. So yeah. All right. Tell well, cool. says he'll buy it if it has Croc. <laughs> <laughs> Most obscure one you can choose. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Telltale. Oh man, yeah. Bummer. Very yeah. big bummer. Lots uh, of layoffs and closures. Just recently, too, the skeleton crew they were going to keep just got laid off as well. So yeah, I just heard that. But I don't know I mean, what that means. I don't know if they're trying to sell their assets off, and so they're like, "Hey, you need to get rid of these people or what?" But I don't know. That's that sucks. How many yeah. people love that game? You know, love the games they've made. I guess not enough because they didn't make enough money or something. Like I don't. It doesn't yeah, make I a mean, lot of despite... sense to me, but. Despite critical acclaim, you know, they don't have the sales to back it up. And this this all just reeks of bad business practice. Yeah, like, I would assume the that people, as well. People in charge of this company did not do right by anybody in this situation. Um, if the games weren't selling, that means they were probably trying to ride off all these deals they were making. Oh, we've got Minecraft, we got Netflix, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were thinking, okay, yeah, as long as we keep making these deals... We'll have enough money to go around when no it just it dried up insanely quick they got two episodes into the most recent walking dead season and then let everybody go like that's how unprepared they were for this it was terrible and i, I will say the one thing is in this day and age and i'm not saying because like you said for there's probably a lot of business practices that kind of wonk you to from this company but i mean think about this the only thing they make are story-based games which nothing wrong with that but in this day and age a lot of those go watch games they why would they buy it? That game isn't something that you would want to buy if you've watched the game from start to finish because the whole point of it's the story. But that's that's their entire library, their catalog. So sure. if their sales are low, I mean, I, I could go to YouTube any of those games and watch them. On that has been an interesting experience. Yeah, that's been an interesting argument recently too is is stuff like that. You know, with the way streaming's gone and, and how, how you have streamers that do like full playthroughs that that can that can dwindle your numbers and, and that's a that's a good point to bring up um because i know like even for me specifically just you know i i buy a lot of games i have a lot of games mm-hmm. um and i probably have some of those telltales because they've come in a in something that i've purchased but like i i would in my opinion rather watch it than play it only just for me because i don't have the time to play those games and so yeah. So it's like uh, I can watch that in the background while I'm doing something else, and and it's great, and I get to I get to see the experience. So I see I I understand that aspect and how that could hurt, you know, those type of people who just focus on those games. So that that's a good point. I I think that makes a lot of sense, but I think there's room for an argument that there for just as many people as there are like you that would rather watch it. Um, I, I think there might be enough that would be inspired by watching someone play to go buy it and play it themselves. Sure. Um, yeah. It might not be as many, but I, I think that's definitely there too. It just and, kind of uh, splits the market a little bit, which I think would be you're losing potential buyers like right off the Right. I, I'm with you. I mean, me and you would probably just go play it. I don't know why we'd watch it and play it, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, and COVID brought up a good point on the business end, uh, wondering how much they pay to license names like Batman, Walking Dead, Stranger Things. They are um, big, big, uh, those are big uh, IPs. So, yeah. Just, I'll say the quality of those games is never like outstandingly high, you know, the way it looks, the art design. So, I mean, they must all that money must have gone to the licenses. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Uh, it just, it's, it's all bad and it's really thing. sad. And, yeah. It, it's so sad when, I mean, before this, I would have said, oh, it's it's the AAA game market that's unsustainable because of, you know, the amount of crunch they have to go through to finish those games and how much they cost to make. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they'll finish a game and then a studio closes down because, oh, we're out of money. Uh, and this goes to show these are, you know, relatively small games, not, not name-wise, but... Um, scope i guess you could say yeah you know like nakona said they're or escard said they're story-based games they're um fairly single kind of single focus on what you're doing in those games so um that's what i mean when i say small um but even even games like that this can happen to if 
you're, you know, the people in charge of the money aren't careful. Sure. The bummer yeah. will never play Wolf Among Us 2. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, let's move on a little bit. We got some PS4 finally opening up crossplay. Hey, that's big news. It's amazing what a game can do, make you do when it makes millions upon millions of dollars a month. So, <laughs> the, the one positive Fortnite note I can ever think of is they made PlayStation, they bullied PlayStation into to open up their uh, their doors. And do <laughs> Even though they did it like grudgingly, yeah, they're, they're like, like son of a uh, bitch. Oh, <laughs> we've we've run the numbers and uh, we, we we think we can pull this off. <laughs> so, I mean, that's good. I like that. Uh, it's always been a dream of mine because I'm a PC guy to be able to play more games with like you guys, for yeah. example, because all you guys do is play on and console, which is fine. It's just like, we never get to play anything. Cause it's, it's everybody wants to have their own little gated community. And, and just over the last few years, that's expanded so much that mm-hmm. I'm pretty excited for the stuff that's coming up that hopefully, you know, they just start allowing everybody to play together so yeah we'll see how it goes but uh yeah, it's it, exciting news so yeah it's definitely a step in the right direction for the community at large um sure. you know uh, sony must have had some legitimate business reasons for not wanting to do it uh business or security i should say but in the grand scheme of things it's like <laughs> if nintendo's doing it yeah. like the the company that still can't figure out how online shit works <laughs> uh you know I, I think they can get behind it cool yeah anyways uh you know right now it's just the game one game but uh you know we had a little bit of cross play before like uh ps4 and pc could rocket play league, rocket right? league yeah mm-hmm. uh but they wouldn't let like xbox like the, it was it was only a one-way gate to like pc so hopefully all that just you know eventually well, it- dissolves you know you know what's interesting is um, the Final Fantasy MMOs between PlayStation and PC that that's always been open. Yeah, um, yeah. Final Think Fantasy about Eleven and fourteen 11, both. Yeah. Eleven had Xbox, play. PlayStation, and PC at one point. That's right, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. I forgot about that. They were ahead of its time back then. Good, good job. Scott. Back in the day. Back yeah. in the day. They they got it going. They yeah. had to do that because otherwise no one would play that game. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to briefly mention something that I thought was interesting uh, the other day. I was just reading the new, you know, different news, and uh, we they had a speed speedrunner who uh, basic he basically matched the time four minutes fifty five seconds for a Super Mario Brothers speedrun, right? It blows my mind. What's crazy about this is he did it unassisted. Apparently, that 455 is like with some sort of assist. I don't know how all speed running works, so I'm not going to pretend to know. But in any case, he's gotten the lowest time uh, that a Naturally. human has been able to, yeah, to uh, do, which is 455, like 96. And he literally like lost two frames somehow. Like he <laughs> he cut off two frames, and like a certain way you jump. Watching these guys is kind of fascinating. Like, I kind of want to maybe do a podcast on speed running at some point because uh, it's, it's just really impressive. Crazy, yeah, and like how timed everything is. Like, he knows all the jumps, you know, and exactly when to jump, and it's just uh, it's ridiculous. It's so much precision in that type of like hobby. Uh, it and fascinates me. It's just really it, cool. So, especially because this is Super Mario Brothers we're talking about. It's like. Who yeah. hasn't played this game to death, and they're still figuring out ways to master it. Exactly. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. So, but I, I like the idea of uh, talking more about speed riding because I I love getting into and watching the GDQ stuff every mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Um, so much fun to watch, uh, and then just seeing what these people go through. Like, I I could never sit down and learn a game to the extent that I could do that. One, I don't have the manual dexterity to pull it off. <laughs> Two, yeah, I, same. I would end up hating any game that I try to do that with. Yeah. Um, sure. but it, it's super impressive and I love watching people do it. And uh I was gonna mention uh, actually just yesterday, uh talking about how the you know, people speedrun Mario games. Uh I saw an article talking about how speedrunners can actually use the music of Mario games mm-hmm. specifically to assist them. Yeah. Because Koji Kondo, the composer for Mario stuff, um, 
he is so adept at composing to he he composes to the rhythm of the gameplay it yeah. it's really impressive because he he's such a master like he he takes note of how the game feels you know and what it looks like when mario's running and jumping and that's what he composes to he doesn't just like willy-nilly make a song um yeah i he, heard that he, that i saw that too i think it was pretty cool yeah he he really makes it fit and that that's why people can like run mario games blindfolded because mm -hmm. they know you know when the song hits this beat you know they're at this frame and they can jump and do whatever yeah it's Pretty crazy cool. uh just like that guy who blindfolded that battle toad level that and didn't take oh my one gosh. hit that was ridiculous yeah <laughs> <laughs> the uh the turbo tunnel that's yeah what it turbo was. tunnel yeah. level yeah anyways yeah, I, I don't know. I just find it interesting, so we should talk about that sometime too. We'll yeah, that'd be cool. Be down. Cool. I think you had another piece of news, Bort, that you wanted to talk about. Uh, oh yeah, I briefly mentioned it. mentioned it earlier. Just, just something I was excited about, which was the um, uh, Castlevania Requiem collection. It it's only coming out on PS4, which is kind of weird. Right. But uh, it's a uh, Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, which are the those games go together. Uh, Rondo is, is the prequel, and Symphony is the sequel to that. Um, Symphony and I obviously kind of reinvigorated the Castlevania franchise. Um, so to be able to play those two games again, you know, I'm, I love them both, and I'll take any chance I can get to replay them. So, right, yeah, so throw it on, throw it on my current system, and yeah, I'm all over it. Cool deal. Well, hey guys, that's that's about it for us, I believe. Yeah, um, thanks for having us, dude. Yeah, hey, I appreciate you guys every time. I uh, really love your alls input, especially. Uh, like hearing some of the console opinion as well, you know, it's always great. Uh, not out of, you know, I like to call you guys the C team, but not because y'all are like <laughs> bad, but you're the console team, right? Console so team. It's, it's great. For sure. But anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys coming by and hanging out. Um, we'll do one last thing real quick. I'm going to do a shout out and we'll do a raid to our streamer, uh, of this podcast, like our, uh, streamer spotlight this week is uh, Jubilaw. He's pretty cool. He has a really good uh, channel. He puts a lot of work into his stuff, um, and he plays a good variety of games. So you guys should definitely check him out. Awesome. Um, we'll we'll uh, give him a little raid here in a second. Uh, so if you want to stick around just long enough to say hi, maybe follow him if you like what you see, because I think he is streaming right now. Uh, and then. You know, uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Again, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, you guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Stay spoopy. Stay spoopy, <laughs> yeah. Be we'll see. We'll we'll have to figure out some more Halloween content for ne next uh, <laughs> next podcast. So uh, covered a lot um, of games today. Yeah, true that. All right, guys, y'all have a good night, uh, and we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Thanks. 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 Guys.